Hey dudes, episode 7, we're going to be going over harmonics and we'll be going over natural, artificial and tapped harmonics because they're all slightly different from each other and we'll be doing that over there. So, to understand some bits and pieces about harmonics we're going to have to go over the physics a little bit first. Now we went over some of this in intonation. In that, we discussed all about string length from nut to saddle and we were using the open harmonic on the 12th fret to make sure the string was completely intonated all the way across the string, all the way across the fretboard rather. So here is a brief diagram about your guitar. So here's the nut of the guitar, so imagine the headstock's here. Awesome headstock, I know. And then the body is here. Da -da 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 Right, so that's the body, a little outline. So the body, we have the bridge, and then at the other end of the guitar we have the nut and the headstock. And these are the two crucial points for the length of the string. And make sure it's all intonated. We went over that a, few, a couple of episodes ago. So, here is a quick diagram of all the different basic harmonic points we're going to be covering. So we're going to be covering um, halfway point, third way point, and quarter point. This also works because of physics. Now the physics of a string is based around vibration. So the whole reason your guitar makes nice noises is because it's tuned to specific metal points, frets, on the board. And whenever the metal on the string makes metal contact with the fret, it cuts the string's length in a physics way. Not physically, though it does um, adjust the string length physically. So you end up with a shorter string, or makes a higher vibration, which makes a higher pitch sound, which makes a higher pitch noise, or note. When we're intonating, we're using the 12th fret, and that's because this point to this point, the 12th fret to the nut, is one whole octave. So we go from a low E here to an E at the other end of the octave, which also happens to be halfway along the fretboard. And this is also why open harmonics work, or natural harmonic. Because you're cutting the string off just lightly, and we'll go over how to actually implement an open harmonic in just a second, but the theory is quite important. So the same way it works when you're doing an open harmonic or a natural harmonic, you're just lightly touching the string and shortening the scale of the string which makes it vibrate at a different frequency, a higher frequency, and exactly half the distance makes double the frequency, which is exactly uh, a whole octave higher in pitch. So, if you're going to make an octave harmonic, natural harmonic, you hit the 12th fret because you're cutting the string in half. And then you can also get cleaner harmonics on the third point, on the third length, and the quarter length. So right here I have the twelfth, and then I have two thirds, because you can split the string into three parts. One, two, three. And you can have it in quarters as well, so you're still interacting with the halfway point, but you've also got two halves of that point too. And this is all vibration-based physics. You can go into further depth, I'll make a link on the description of this video and I'll link the Wikipedia point on um, frequency and harmonics to do with guitars. It's really interesting stuff to read up on. I think I've done the same with scales and modes because I can only... I'm only trying to implement basic theory here so if you want to go into more detail the links will be in the description. So back to this. We can have it in half, thirds and quarters but because we can have thirds and quarters as well that means we're actually getting notes in between the two octaves. And then the easiest points that these can be found are the 5th fret and the 7th fret. Now you might have already found this anyway because if you've been dabbling with natural harmonics for a while sometimes you just find them and you start playing with them or you're told about them and you find them and you start playing with them. This is why it works. The 5th fret is halfway between the, uh, the nut and the 12th fret. Makes sense. So really what you're playing is from bridge to the fret mark. So actually what you're playing here is three quarters of the, of the string, but because of the way physics works and frequencies work, 
you're actually playing the exact same note as you would be playing at the quarter point as well. Don't ask. I can go into even more depth about this, but like I've said, links in the description to the frequency Wikipedia page, which has all this information, which is really, really easy to understand and readily available. So, we have fifth fret, which is a quarter of the way. So, nut, quarter, half, quarter, bridge. But, really you should think of it as bridge, quarter, half, three quarters, nut. So, I'll change that quickly. And that's exact same with the third point. So you've got one, two, three. So bridge to one, one to two, two to three, all the way along the string. So I'll change that to two thirds. And it just so happens that these harmonics are the most readily available when you're starting off um, with learning natural harmonic points. So you're usually um, shown 5th, 7th and 12th fret. These are really easy, easy to do because your frets are wide apart and you can kind of find them really easily with the fret. They're exactly on the frets, which is really, really good. But what you might not know is that those are the exact same on the 19th fret and the 24th fret. Now you might be wondering why it's not the 15th or the 17th or why it isn't other points on the fretboard. That's because we're not just talking about the fretboard, we're talking about the entire string length. So, actually, your whole fretboard is only two-thirds of the length of the string. Because if you try and put frets um, from 24 to the bridge saddle, it gets really, really, really thin in spacing, and you need space for pickups. You'll find some guitars that have 30 frets and 27 frets, and these are really, really good for finding the higher harmonic points. But... Most guitars are either 21, 22 or 24 frets. I always work with 24 frets because then I have the two octave scale. But this all works on any guitar you use because it isn't based around the fretboard. It's based predominantly around the string. So your, your finger is acting as the fret instead of the fret on the board. That's how you're separating the string and shortening it. So to overview what I've just said, because it can get a wee bit confusing. Bridge to nut is the whole length of the string. Your fretboard will start at fret 24 or wherever, 21, 22, 24, sometimes 27, in really rare cases 30, but I think there's only been a couple of guitars that do that. In fact, if you look up a guitar, it's called Uli John Roth, that's U-L-I John Roth, J-O-N Roth, R-O-T-H. He has a phenomenally um, intricate guitar. He's got whole no separations instead of semitone separations and all that kind of stuff. It's fascinating stuff if you're interested. If you're not, don't bother looking it up. I might link that in the description as well. But here's the overview. So that's your string, the black dotted line there. Here's the bridge. Here's the nut here. And then to find the middle point of the string, it's actually smack dab on the 12th fret, which is really good. Also works because the frets are based in the same way but you're using a slightly different um, idea in physics to make the notes. Similar, but not the exact same. So instead of using the fret to make the note, like you can on the 5th and 7th, you can get a note on the 5th and 7th, but you can also use your finger lightly as a fret and make the 5th and 7th natural harmonic notes. Now, a point I will bring up absolutely is the 5th, fret harmonic sounds exactly like if you were to play the 24th fret so it is a high E on the 24th fret if you're talking about the low E string you have an open E here you have your half point here so a, an octave higher then you have an octave higher here so it's E E E but you can also play a two octave higher E note on the 5th fret natural harmonic if you go from the open note to the 5th fret harmonic. A little bit of cool theory there. Also, the 7th fret natural harmonic will sound just like the 19th fret played note. That's because you're using the same theory as the frets are, 
but you're using it in a slightly different way so you can actually mirror the same notes here, here and play them with the frets on the fretboard down on the string. Some cool theory. Like I said, description bar will hold a couple of links to cool bits of educational material that I think you'll find very interesting if this is all very interesting to you. So, let's get back to the guitar and I'll show you exactly how to play an actual harmonic. So here's a little cool thing to show you exactly why it's a quarter of the way along the string. So here's the nut and here is the fifth fret. The fifth fret is just over 16 centimeters. And then if you go from the fifth fret to the twelfth fret, just over 16 centimeters. Twelfth fret to the twenty-fourth fret, just over 16 centimeters. And then twenty-fourth fret to the bridge saddle, just over 16 centimeters. So there we go exactly quarters. So that's why this works. It sounds a bit better plugged in so I think I'll go and plug in two seconds. So here we have the open string. Here we have the fifth fret natural harmonic, twelfth fret, twenty-fourth fret. So those same note. Also might need to see that this guitar needs a little bit intonated as it's slightly off but we shall persevere so you'll notice that that note same note same note cool a little bit of added theory there and a little bit of added mischief so how do we actually achieve a natural harmonic well to actually play a note on a guitar you all should know you put your finger just behind the fret of the fret you want to play, so 3rd fret, so that's an, a G so to play that G you need to have your finger right behind the 3rd fret marker which is this big strip of metal here, fret fret marker is actually, well it would be there but I've got some filigree going down my fretboard because I'm extra super special so, G to play a G you put your finger just behind the 3rd fret to the G fret when you're tuned to E standard hold your finger firmly down to cut the string off at that fret so the length of the string is only from the 3rd fret to the saddle and you get a G note ok great now the reason that intonation works is because the 12th fret natural harmonic and the 12th fret same note, though that fret's a wee bit flat, so I need some recrowning done. So this is a whole octave here, from open to 12. So that works, because that's half the string length, just by magic. And that's half the string length of the full string duration as well. So you get a 12th fret natural harmonic on the 12th fret. And it's exactly half, exactly half. Cool. Right. So if I were to play quarter of the distance, I get a quarter of the frequency. But if I also play the third, three quarters of the distance, I also get quarter of the distance. Voodoo wizardry. Right. So to actually apply how to play a natural harmonic, is if you're trying to play an actual note you put your finger behind the fret and you play the note to actually achieve the natural harmonic your finger has to be the fret so you have to cut off the string but not dull the string so if you've heard of palm muting what you're doing is you're muting the strings with your palm funnily enough so the skin contact is, is enough to mute or dampen the strings vibrations therefore nullifying the note but with a natural harmonic, you're going to try and use the hardest callus. Well, usually your fingers get a bit callous from playing guitar anyway. But using the hardest point, lightly, lightly touching the string to act as a fret of your own. This can take a wee bit to get focused and get settled down to. But with a little bit of uh, training and a little bit of practice, it gets quite clear. which is quite cool. The way to practice this I always found over the whole neck is to play 
Close Encounters with the, of the Third Kind, which is a classic uh, sci-fi film, and the theme is something like... And that's just interacting between the 12th fret and 7th fret. So, high E. There you go. Another little exercise you can do is... as light as possible, just to make your finger the fret. More kinds of harmonics besides natural harmonics are artificial, which is pinched harmonics, and we get tapped harmonics as well. So, the best way to get a good artificial harmonic or a pinched harmonic, technique-wise, is you need the very, very fine point of the pick, and you're using the side of your thumb to brush on the, the string after you've plucked the note to give it a kind of pseudo-natural harmonic touch kind of vibe, but what you're doing is you're hitting the string twice which gives it a bit of a, a squeal noise, so just to example What you also notice is when I'm picking in different places, so I'm picking closer to the neck, I get this, and then I bring it back down. There you go, that's artificial harmonics. So all you're doing is you're taking the pick, the fine point of the pick, hitting the note and then brushing your thumb I use there you go artificial harmonics takes a wee bit of practice to get it right but you are just using the very tip of your pick and the side of your thumb just touching it Uh, notable players for artificial harmonics are pretty much Zach Wilde, it's just the pinched king. But you'll hear them all over the place. After this we have tapped harmonics, I'm going to put my pick down for this bit. Actually no, I'll hold on to it. So with a tapped harmonic, you're playing a chord my favourite thing is uh, Van Halen Dance the Night Away well there's a little bit where the keyboard does a and you can emulate that I think Eddie does he did at least emulate it by doing tapped harmonics and what you're doing is you're playing the chord holding the notes down in the chord and you're hitting a nodal point now that's a natural harmonic term for a point where the, harm the harmonic is easy to get so for example and all you're really doing is you're hitting a point in the harmony And what you'll notice is I'm not pressing really hard down on the string, so I'm not going... I'm not doing that, I'm just... Touch, 
like almost hammering but touching the string just So it's not the same as tapping, which we're about to cover in a few episodes, but you're hammering the fret, but it's almost like like a kind of timpani drum technique, so you're just bouncing off the note. It's more like a snare hit, a light snare hit than anything else. You're just bouncing off the, the skin, rather, the string. So, if we're doing a quick exercise on how to get a decent tapped harmonic note, uh, what I'd like you to do is hit the E note on the A string, so, and you're going to be tapping at the 14th fret, and the 19th fret. There you go, tapped harmonics. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll catch you, us be my split personality. I'll see you in a couple of days.